Good morning, all of you. Welcome to Ansarkari. So in this video, we'll be analyzing different important newspapers from the perspective of UPSC civil services examination. And some of the important topics that we are going to look into are that will the SVB collapse impact the Indian startups? SVB is the Silicon Valley Bank, which is recently failed in US. Secondly, AUKUS. So is it the three-way strategic alliance against China? And thirdly is India's sinking islands in need of urgent intervention. Lastly, Kashmir's blooms, they drive the blues away. So for a population that is dealing with death and mental distress on a daily basis, spring offers the welcome respite. So these are some of the key topics that we'll be looking into. So let's start with the analysis. So firstly, Punjab police, it launches hunt for pro Khalistan preacher Amrit Pal Singh. And 78 people have already been arrested, but... He is still not arrested. So we know about the situation. We know about this personality. He's involved into violence. And there was one incident in Ajnala where he could successfully, with a group of people, re uh, release a prisoner. And that's how basically now his uh, supporters and supporters, they are being arrested. And even police is looking for him. So... In this context, it is important for us to know about the history, history in the context of the Blue Star operation and about Bhindra Wale because it is being said that his personality, the way he dresses is similar to that of Bhindra Wale. So in a major crackdown against the pro-Khalistan propagator Amrit Pal Singh and his supporters, Punjab police it, it has arrested 78 persons and launched a hunt for him as well. And internet services, they were suspended across the state till Sunday noon to prevent any incitement to violence. So even we need to look into this thing, key, uh, what are the situation, what are the conditions under which internet services, they can be suspended. So that is also important. And it is, oh, obviously, it is very clear that they carried arms and ammunition. So even that has been seized apart from that. Police said that the statewide cordon and Search exercise was carried out against the elements linked to Varis the Punjab, Varis Punjab Day, which is headed by Mr. Amrit Pal. And that is in connection with the multiple criminal cases against him. So simultaneously, others, they were picked up from different places. So that has been the action taken by the Punjab police against such people. So India suits up for deepest dive yet. So NIOT, it is set to spearhead a 6,000 meter dive into the Indian Ocean, which is a mission to explore marine biodiversity and potential of the seabed. So here, National Institute of Ocean Technology in Chennai, that is taking the lead and the influence of James Cameron, who is the Canadian-American filmmaker whose cinema has frequently explored the mysteries of the deep ocean, looms large on the scientist at the National Institute of Ocean Technology. So that is the mission. And the submarine would be the Matsya 6000. And that would be used in order to explore the marine biodiversity and the potential of the seabed and other important resources that we have So if India's mission expected to take place in late 2024-25, they were to be successful, it would make it only one among the six countries to have piloted a manned undersea expedition beyond 5,000 meters. So that would be the achievement if we are successful in this. And much likely, the early days of India's space program, which prioritized the public utility over the Cold War spurred space races, India's motivations, they are guided by the pragmatism, explore the potential for the precious metals and scope marine biodiversity. And India's seabed and the relevant zones with the economic potential, they aren't deeper than 6,000 meters. So our technology and vehicles, they are designed and developed for our needs. And Samudrayan or the journey into the sea and the NIOT mission, they can be conceptualized as the reverse of the forthcoming Gaganyan mission. So obviously reverse because Gaganyan mission is for the space and reverse of that is for the sea. So the Indian Space Research Organization's attempt at a manned mission into the space. So opposite of Gaganyan would be the NIOT's mission. So we'll be having a G20 tourism meet in Srinagar. So 
different meetings are happening at different important places across India, be it from the perspective of historical or art and cultural or tourism perspective. So even that has a proper plan behind it. So yesterday we looked at this, that India UAE investor meet would be there in Srinagar. And what are the things at which we are looking at? So that includes the B2G meetings, strengthening our partnership, business networking, foreign investment opportunities, foreign direct investment and employment opportunities. Jharkhand School of Excellence, so it is towards an inclusive learning environment for all. So there are 80 schools of excellence, 325 block level leader schools and 4000 gram panchayat level model schools. So there's a proper model which is working the state as far as the education is concerned and how the schools are perform performing and working. So there is improved learning outcomes and opportunities for over 15 lakh students. They are aimed at achieving equality, quality, inclusivity, and standardization in education. So these are the keywords and provision of state-of-the-art quality education in consonance with the changing times. So it is important that we know that technology changes so fast, our demands are changing, opportunities are changing in different spheres. So because of that, it is important that we have state-of-the-art quality education, which is in sync with the changing needs and there is CBSC affiliation and an outcome framework in tune with the national and the state guidelines. So there are state-of-the-art infrastructure facilities which are available or which are being constructed. There are English medium schools, there is integrated STEM labs, and we also talk about uh, increasing the share or increasing the participation or enrollment of females or girls in a STEM. So STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. There are digital smart classes, there is robust IT infrastructure working, there is national level sports training also. So there's a comprehensive system we can see. Moving forward, yesterday also we talked about inauguration regarding the oil pipeline between India and Bangladesh. So the Indian Prime Minister says better connectivity will strengthen people-to-people -people relations, first point, and his Bangladesh counterpart expresses thanks for partnership in her country's quest for energy security. So Prime Minister of Bangladesh is Sheikh Hasina, and you can see virtually they inaugurated this oil pipeline. So it is called India-Bangladesh Friendship Pipeline and it will bring diesel from Assam's Numaligad Refineries Marketing Depot in Siliguri to Parbatipur in Northern Bangladesh. So that's how uh, even this is important for us to remember. So it is bringing oil from uh, diesel from the Assam's Numaligad Refinery. So it's a very famous place and refinery and it would be uh, transporting it to the... Uh, Parbatipur in Northern Bangladesh. So out of the total length of this pipeline, Bangladesh has around 126.57 km and India has 5 km of the pipeline. So the pipeline, it has become operational from um, yesterday and many countries in the world, they are suffering from energy insecurity because of the Russia-Ukraine war. But this pipeline will help our people. Uh, this is from the Bangladesh Prime Minister. So it would be helping the people of Bangladesh and helping Bangladesh in terms of energy security. So that's there and...
So there's a subtle message that the omission of Miss Banerjee's name is being viewed as a subtle message conveying Dhaka's unhappiness about the reports of West Bengal's plans to construct hydro power projects and canals near Darjeeling to irrigate the agricultural fields in Jalpaiguri and Kuch Bihar that, uh, that may divert the Tista's water. So that is also one of the, we can say, concerns between the two countries. And... And Dhaka may raise this issue at the UN Water Conference in New York also. So that might be possible. So water is, uh, so the water issue is also significant for Ms. Asina, who is poised to face a general election this year, where her government's inability to get the waters of the Tista may make her a target of attack from her opposition. So it is important for us to know the origin of River Tista and uh, in which all states it flows in India. And then it finally enters into Bangladesh and meets a which river. The collagen system is not perfect but is the best available from the Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachud. So not every system is perfect but this is the best system developed by the Indian judiciary. So you're talking about the collagen system. And he was defending the collegium system of appointing judges, which is a major bone of contention between the government and the judiciary right now. So as per the government, they feel that they might, there, there should be or some representative or from the government side in the collegium if they're not. Obviously, there is no idea of uh, basically coming up with the NJAC, which was struck down by Supreme Court in 2015, but they feel that if not that, so there should be at least one representative of government in the collegium system. So that's there. And then there are certain questions regarding the transparency of the system. So we need to ensure that at least if not any other system, uh, we need to take steps in order to ensure that at least it becomes much more transparent in uh, terms of appointment of judges. So that process needs to be made transparent and accountable. So telecom companies and the return of the net neutrality debate. So since November 2022, the Cellular Operators Association of India which is Co Koya, uh, it represents Bharati, Airtel, uh, Vodafone, Idea, and Reliance, Geo, the three major telecom operators which are functional in India. So it has been demanding that platforms such as YouTube and WhatsApp, they pay a share of revenue as network cost. So this has reignited the debate around the net neutrality. So an immediate response to the demand, the Broadband India Forum, which represents internet firms such as Meta and Google, they wrote a letter to the Department of Telecommunications rebutting the uh, Cellular Operators Association of India's demands. So this concept of paying uh, for the use of infrastructure is an excellent concept wherein any entity that uses another entity's infrastructure, they should pay for it. And this is from the deputy director of BIF. So, however, the revenue is earned by the infrastructure provider like telecom operators. They should also be shared with the entity using it in the same proportion. So these are some of the claims or demands we can say. So the infrastructure for any communication network also includes the data centers, undersea cables, content hosting centers, content delivery networks, and so on, all of which are built by the OTT platforms. So in 2016, internet activists, they celebrated as the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India ruled in favor of the net neutrality. The concept is that Oh, all the traffic on an internet network has to be treated equally. So in short, this is what we mean by net neutrality, that all traffic which is available, which is there on the internet network, that has to be treated equally. And the telecom regulator capped a highly publicized debate on the subject and concluded that programs such as Free Basics by 
Facebook and telecom operators plans to charge extra for the data calls using apps such as Viber would be prohibited as all the internet access had to be priced equally. So this has been uh, ruled away by the telecom regulator that is Thrive. So the Department of Telecommunications also in 2018, it embedded the net neutrality concept into the unified license whose conditions all telecom operators and internet providers are bound by. So still COVID-19 cases, they are rising in India. So be cautious, please wear your mask whenever you're going out and try to maintain social distancing in order to Keep your health and yourself safe. So millets can be a solution for food and nutrition crisis. We have talked about this point a lot that they are very nutritious and they're also climate resilient crop. So they can uh, they can be a solution for the food security and food insecurity ke solution. And then also the nutrition crisis that India is reeling under when we talk about the problem of undernutrition. So, Prime Minister, he inaugurates the Global Millets Conference, which will see participation from several countries with sessions to build awareness uh, regarding these coarse grains among various stakeholders. So, Prime Minister says that India's millet mission will prove to be a boon for 2.5 crore farmers. So, that's there. And we'll not go into much details because we have discussed this topic a lot. So Kashmir's spring sunshine, it blows the cobwebs away. The only season that brings a smile to the face of Khalida Jan, who's 71, is spring. So that's there. And her son disappeared after the security forces allegedly picked him up from the North Kashmir in 1992. And life has never been the same again for her. So it is a spring season. And you can see in this picture, more than a million flowers will bloom in the tulip garden in Kashmir this season. So here, as we talked about the problem of mental distress, so the Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, which is there in Srinagar, in Srinagar, basically, uh, we need to know more about it. And it says that with some good news for his position, so with a gray and grim winter giving way for a colorful sunny spring, he, a physician from the Institute told his psychiatrist that he was feeling better and ready to give up the antidepressant. So as per uh, a person, so obviously nature helps in healing and obviously flowers also play an important role in this. So that's how we can relate nature with mental distress. So the doctors encourage uh, the people who are reeling under the mental distress to socialize more and to move around with friends to absorb the positive change which is setting in, which is more flowers blooming around in Kashmir. Coming to the world page, so Indonesia's Merapi volcano, it finally erupted and with hot clouds reaching 1300 meters. So we talked about this before as well, that Mount Merapi is there in Indonesia. And this is one of the world's most active volcanoes. So that's there. And you need to know what can be the climatic impacts of a volcanic eruption, which all gases are released. And Putin visits Crimea on annexation anniversary. Grain deal has been extended. So the geography of this region is extremely important. Please open your atlases and look at all the important details around this region, be it water bodies and which all countries surround which all other countries. Specifically, Ukraine is surrounded by which all countries. That is very important. And the surrounding water bodies, different straits which are located. So all of that is important.
So WHO again it accuses China of withholding the COVID data. So it is accused China of withholding the information and data that may throw light on the origin of the COVID-19 pandemic and it has asked why such information was not shared three years ago. So WHO was made aware of the data published on the Global Initiative on Sharing Avian Influenza Data Database, and it was basically taken down again recently. So the data from the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention relates to the samples taken at the Hunan market in Wuhan in 2020. And this a global initiative on sharing avian influenza data. It is a global science initiative and primary source established in 2008 that provides open access to genomic data of influenza viruses and the coronavirus responsible for COVID-19 pandemic. Moving to Indian Express. So our CJ says that there's no question of pressure quotes they constantly holding government to account. So do not want to join the issue with law minister. I respect his perception. That's what our CJ has to say. So he's calling for trust in the robust nature of our democracy. CGI said there is no question of any pressure on the Supreme Court from the executive and there was a wealth of evidence to show that the courts, they were speaking truth to power and constantly holding the government to account. She so was uh, uh, answering specific query at India Today Conclave. So that's where he was addressing the people. So in the Morni Hills, which are there in the state of Haryana, the Haryana government project breeds new life into Sherla Katal. So there are two contrasting pictures of Sherla Katal. And you can see it, one is from 2022 and at present during its rejuvenation. So government is taking efforts to revive this water body. So the scheme is Amrit Sarovar scheme. So it is a rejuvenation plan mooted by the Haryana government that aims to conserve the water bodies throughout the state. So the water body, which is situated on the edge of two hills near the link road between the Moni Hills and the Badial villages, they have seen an increase in its depth and courtesy its uh, base being dug by the heavy earth movers. So the silt slurry hence being removed is being placed on the banks of the pond to increase its height. And apart from this, a track is also being constructed around the water body. So the entire work is being executed by the Haryana Pond and Waste Water Management Authority. So basically this Sherla Katal, it is a water body which had attracted a lot of migratory birds as well as wild animals, including sambars, wild boars and deer. So it is important for the rejuvenation. And we can know uh, more about the Ariana Pond and Wastewater Management Authority. So, and we have already named the scheme. So it is under the Amrit Sarovar scheme. So in PGI, we are seeing the first case of robotic-assisted drug-coated balloon implantation. So PGI has already attained the least mortality in patients with cardiogenic shock and acute coronary syndrome. So that's how basically technology is helping here. I would say artificial intelligence is playing a role. Moving forward. Uh, 
So uh, basically, uh, we can use fly ash in construction of roads, but the ministry ordered the fly ash used in 2021, but most projects in Punjab, they're still using the topsoil. So that's not good, but fly ash can definitely be utilized in construction of roadways. That is important for us. So wheat misses the MSP ahead of the procurement in Madhya Pradesh. So we know that wheat prices, they are basically increasing, but here they're not able to meet even the MSP price. So Madhya Pradesh is the second largest contributor of wheat after Punjab to the central pool. So MSP announced by the center was rupees 2,125 per quintal and price of the normal quality wheat and mandis across Madhya Pradesh is at around 1,800 to 2,000 per quintal. So the important takeaway for us is that Madhya Pradesh is the second largest and wheat is the largest contributor to the central pool as far as wheat is concerned. So a high court judge says that is not sure if the note ban that is uh, that was there, uh, it achieved its three goals or not. So the demonetization, which was there in 2016, whether it achieved its three goals. So for us, it is important to know what were those three goals. So speaking on the role of judiciary in shaping the economies, a Gujarat high court judge, he uh, expressed apprehension whether the center's demonetization move in 2016 had indeed achieved the stated objectives of eliminating the fake currencies, black money, and terror financing, as was the majority view of the Supreme Court in its verdict earlier this year. So there was one Supreme Court verdict in 2001 ruling in the Balco Employees Union case where the union had challenged the government's decision to divest in the PSU. So he said that that is when the Supreme Court held that the wisdom and advisability of the economic policies are ordinarily not amenable to judicial review unless it can be demonstrated that the policy is contrary to any statutory provision or the constitution. So it is not for the courts to consider the relative merits of different economic policies. And of course, we have had cases like possibly the Goa mining case, or we can take up the Mopa Goa airport case, where Supreme Court, it had to intervene when it came to balancing the economic considerations with human approach and the environmental issues. So obviously it is important to maintain a balance between the two because we can't say that if you are having higher amount of GDP, higher growth in GDP and recording a higher value of GDP, that is an economic growth. No, but we want sustainable development. We want a sustainable growth where it is important that we take into consideration the environmental impacts as well. So we need to ensure that whatever projects we are going ahead with, they are having least impact on the environment. And rain and strong wind, they are a worry for the Punjab wheat farmers. So recent days we have been seeing uh, rains. So because of that, obviously the crop, the standing crop can be impacted and, and ultimately it would be impacting reduction in the total production of wheat and then again a rise in their prices. So in this picture, you can see a damaged wheat field because of heavy rain and strong wind in Ludhiana village. So criticism amid the Indian democracy success is like a Kala Tika, a prime minister says this. So stepping up the heat on Rahul Gandhi for his criticism of the state of democracy in India during his tour of the UK recently, a prime minister said that 
the comments was like a kala tikka since everything is going well in our country so without naming anyone prime minister also said that the success of india's democracy and its institutions is hurting some people and that is why they are attacking it so but india will continue to achieve its goals and the india moment Basically, at the end of today's conclave in New Delhi, he was addressing there. So, uh, this was his keynote address to the people. So, some political tones and... LSE situation in eastern Ladakh is fragile and dangerous as per our external affairs minister. So it is fragile and dangerous, obviously, because of Chinese incursions. So the situation along the line of actual control in eastern Ladakh remains very fragile and quite dangerous in terms of military assessment. And in a significant choice of words that underlines the current state of India-China border standoff that began nearly three years ago, She says that I am troubled as a citizen of India when I see somebody drooling over China and being dismissive about India. So what's the word which comes to Rahul Gandhi's mind when he talks of China, harmony? His one word description of China is harmony and his one word description of India is discord. So this is the first time uh, Jay Shankar, he has used such strong language to describe India-China situation at the LSE where the Chinese they have matched a buildup of around 60,000 Indian troops at close proximity. See, uh, so uh, he has earlier called it unstable or abnormal. So sources in the government said that Jashankar's use of the words dangerous is deliberate given the aggressive posture adopted by the Chinese as assessed by the Indian military and also the geopolitical circumstances arising out of Xi Jinping's rare third term as the Chinese president. So he said the Chinese, they violated the agreements in 2020 and the consequences of it were seen in the Galwan Valley and other areas. And he also said that the two countries have off late. They made substantial progress on disengagement in many areas. While discussions were on uh, over many other areas, they are well. So it's a painstaking job and we'll do that. So that's what he has to say. So we are also focusing upon adventure sport as far as promotion of tourism is concerned. So main attraction will be Darjeeling Himalayan Railways. So the second tourism track meeting under the India's G20 presidency, is, it is going to be held in West Bengal's Siliguri and Darjeeling in the first week of April. So it will focus on potential of adventure tourism. So the five priority areas are green tourism, digitalization, skills tourism, MSMEs, and destination management. So these were introduced by India in the working session and they were endorsed by all the G20 members. So with a presentation from the United Nations World Tourism Organization and interventions by G20 Troika. Troika is, compo is compo composed of India, Indonesia, and Brazil. So the working session is aimed at finalizing the first draft outcome. And the draft will be factored in during the tourism track ministerials to be held in Goa in July. So that's there. So main traction is going to be the Darjeeling Himalayan Railways, also known as the Toy Train Ride, which will start from Ghum, which is India's highest railway station at an altitude of 2,258 meters, to Batasia Loop, which offers a view of the Kanchanjunga Peak. So how to diminish parliamentary democracy? So the U.S.-based Freedom House downgraded India to a partially free democracy. So the Vedam Institute of Sweden described India as an electoral autocracy and in the Economist Intelligence Unit's Democracy Index, India has slipped to rank 53. So in this decline, both the Houses of the Parliament and their members, they have played their part. And readers, they can add their observations to my shortlist on how India is basically. So the author of this article is P. Chidamran. So, so he has basically provided a short list on how India's parliamentary democracy has been diminished. So the first point is Rule 267 of the Rules of Procedure of the Rajya Sabha. And even Lok Sabha has a similar rule, which is invoked by the members of the opposition to raise a discussion on a matter of urgent public importance. 
So in the last several months, the rule it has been invoked in both the houses numerous times in order to discuss matters of urgent public importance, ranging from the Chinese incursions into India to the report of Hindenburg Research LLC. So the chair has rejected every motion. And conclusion is that as far as the India's parliament is concerned, there is no matter of urgent public importance that requires to be discussed setting aside the business of the day. So you have to believe that the Indian people, they are so safe, secure and content that nothing that concerns them merits an urgent discussion in the parliament. So the uh, first argument is that the matters of urgent uh, urgent public importance are not taken up and they are basically rejected by the uh, Rajya Sabha chairperson. Second is the presidential prime minister. So the prime minister, if he's a member of the Lok Sabha, is the leader of the house and prime minister Modi is the leader of the 17th Lok Sabha. So he's rarely present in either of the houses and he, he replies to the debates on the motion of thanks to the president's address every year. So I cannot recall any other major intervention by the prime minister. So he, he does not answer the questions in the parliament. Usually a minister speaks on his behalf. And he says that his approach to parliament is very different from the approach of, for example, Jawaharlal Nehru, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and Atal Bihari Vajpayee. So the prime minister has become presidential, and if the prime minister is remain presidential and act presidential, not for long will India be a parliamentary democracy. So this is the second argument presented by him. The third point is that the House of Commons sits on 135 days a year and in 2021, the Lok Sabha held only 59 sittings and Rajya Sabha 58 sittings. And in 2022, there were just 56 settings each of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So many of the sittings, they were washed out because of the disruptions. And uh, Arun Jaitley famously said that obstructionism is a part of legitimate parliamentary tactics. So the whole winter session of 2010 was watched out on the demand for the resignation of a minister and the constitution of a JPC. And in that session, Lok Sabha used 6% of the uh, allotted time and the Rajya Sabha used only 2%. So of late, the tactics, they have been refined in the, in the current budget session. The treasury benches, they have led the disruptions every day. So few sittings and more disruptions will render the parliament sessions irrelevant. So bills, they could be passed without a debate. And we can begin to contemplate a time when parliament will sit only a few days a year, debate nothing and pass all bills midst the din and the disruption. So that's what is the current scenario that there are so many disruptions there are less settings and there are more disruptions that are visible in the parliamentary functioning and the fourth argument is that both the houses of parliament they are forums of debate and great debates they have taken place in the parliament of india no doubt and the india china, uh, india china war of 1962 in which india suffered a humiliating defeat was also debated so allegations regarding the lic's investment in the shares of the haridas mundras companies they were debated allegations surrounding the import of the bofors guns they were debated multiple times and the demolition of the barbary masjid was debated so invariably, debates end without a vote and in a parliamentary democracy, the government need not fear a debate because it will always have or it is presumed to have a majority of the members on its sides. So yet the current government refuses to allow debates in the parliament. So there is an old truism that the opposition will have its say, the government will have its way. And uh, the author says that I'm certain the government does not fear that it will lose its way. So what the government fears is that opposition will bring to light uncomfortable truths during its say. And has India moved into an era of a parliament sans debate? I fear so. And if my fear proves true, we have to conclude that the ceremony to bid farewell to parliamentary democracy will begin soon. So these are the some personal views of the author. And lastly, imagine that a session of the parliament is called and imagine that all the members gathered at the great hall. And then imagine that all the members, they vote to elect a leader as the president of the republic and there are no votes opposing the candidate. So there are no abstentions. And in fact, there is uh, in uh, other candidate and the country celebrates the result as a victory of the people's democracy. So can this happen in India or not? So I uh, basically Arthur says, I can because we are steadily on a course to one party rule. So if 15 states, they are ruled by one party and that party are able to elect 362 members of the Lok Sabha and 163 members of the Rajya Sabha, 
nothing will stop India from becoming another people's republic. So mercifully, that dreaded prospect is some distance away, but it cannot be ruled out altogether. So when India becomes a people's republic, parliamentary democracy in India would have reached its final resting place. So some keen observations are uh, also mentioned in this article. So it is important for us, uh, for general awareness, and we need to know about certain data that has been mentioned. So uh, coming to the economy page, we see only 20% of the money startups had was brought back to the banks at the gift city. So we're talking about the failure of SBB Bank. So the impact on the Indian startups, so these startups which had exposure to the Silicon Valley Bank, uh, only 20% of the money has been brought back to India to the gift city. So as startups, they tied over the SVB implosion, most keep off the government's gift city helpline. So for the 30-year-old Indian startup founder, the last weekend was one of the longest in his life. So droopy eyes and a, stub, uh, and a stubble after 48 hours of staying awake, the youngster, like most founder and investors in India's startups ecosystem, they spent these two days closed uh, Closeted in one meeting after the other. So lawyers, they were involved, so were accountants. So his business was among the hundreds of young Indian businesses that were grappling with the fallout of the beleaguered Silicon Valley Bank, which broke over the weekend and then events unfolded over the following week. So basically, Indian Electronics and Information Technology Ministry is trying to help the Indian startups and in future, in order to ensure that we are, we, uh, the Indian startups, they're not dependent on the foreign banks for funding, how they can be provided funding by the domestic sources. So Give City has been conceptualized to be an international financial hub and it aims to be the financial and IT hub for the country. So fintech platforms, they have partnered with banks such as RBI, ICICI and Kotak to set up these US dollar banks in the gift city. So it is located in Gujarat. And so right taxation norms to help e-gaming industry. So the online gaming sector has potential to contribute significantly to digital economy as per a report and 27% of the compound annual growth rate is the growth of the online gaming over the next five years in India. That's what we're expecting. And 1 million is the ability to add jobs by 2030. So regulation of the online gaming to address various social issues, then a pertinent issue relating to the implementation mechanism proposed in the union budget for the TDS. And apart from that, the issue has arisen due to the different provisions on the online gaming coming into force on two different dates. So the recurrent developments will also lead to the higher cost for the industry and the sector holds a huge potential to boost India's GDP. But it is important that we regulate this sector, the online gaming industry. So our forex reserves, they are down by $2.39 billion and they now stand at $560 billion. And the loss in the reserves is due to the revaluation of the foreign currency assets, which are the largest component of the Forex kitty in India. And that is to the tune of $2.2 billion to $494.86 billion for the week to March 10. So on a year basis, the value of the foreign currency assets, it fell by $45.86 billion. And from a fiscal year perspective, they have lost uh, they lost $59 billion. So expressed in dollar terms, the foreign currency assets, it includes the effect of the appreciation or the depreciation of the non-US units like the euro, the pound, and the yen, which is held in the foreign exchange reserves. So the reserve losses, they are primarily due to the RBI selling dollars to stem the rupee volatility in the spot in the forwards markets to prevent runaway moves in the exchange rate. So because of the depreciation of the Indian rupee vis-a-vis -vis the dollar, it is 
uh, RBI's intervention, which is trying to stabilize the volatility in the exchange rate by selling dollars in the market. So that is one of the major reasons why we are seeing a fall in our forex reserves. So last week, rupees stood ground and it lost just 10 basis points against the dollar and the currency traded in the range of 81.61 rupees to a one dollar to 82.29 rupees so bahrain is keen on upi linkage for faster payments between the countries so uh, we've talked about this thing that we are taking upi payments on a global scale and we have had uh, this thing with singapore so you can make payments using your upi in certain countries where it has been allowed so after singapore we're seeing bahrain has a uh, in evinced interest in india's retail payment system and it has held initial talks with the government for a possible collaboration on this thing so this is in line with the recent integration of india's upi and singapore's pay now payment system so last month upi and its equivalent network in singapore pay now they were integrated to enable faster remittances between the citizens of the two countries at a highly competitive rate so payment system operators they must focus on governance and the risk management so uh, the rbi governor raghuram uh, sorry rbi governor shakti gandas said that he urged the payment system operators to focus on ensuring good governance prudent risk management and responsive grievance redress mechanism so he asked the psos to work on formation of self-regulatory organizations for the greater good of all the stakeholders so it is good for their long-term success so every failed transaction, every fraud attempted or actually carried out, every complaint that is not satisfactorily addressed should be a cause of concern and must invite a detailed root cause analysis. So according to him, availability and affordability of an expeditious grievance redress mechanism is of utmost importance to ensure public trust in the digital payments. So that's there. So we can go ahead with the online dispute resolution system to enhance customer satisfaction. So he said that in this digital age, there is a necessity to constantly upgrade the system so as to remain relevant and increase efficiency and legacy systems must be updated to bring them in line with the changing realities. So coming to the world page. Taking up the financial express now. So, so we have seen that Prime Minister bats for higher millet output and inclusion in the PDS. So there are basically plans and discussions going on for inclusion of millets in the PDS system. And India's banking system is strong. So India's economic and banking system, they are strong even amid the turmoil currently rocking the global markets. And midst global crisis, today India's economic system that is strong, that is resilient, the banking system is also strong. So this is the power of our institutions. So uh, we can say that uh, if you're less dependent upon the foreign institutions, the foreign banks, we're less connected with them. So the safer is our systems. So that is one of the reasons why our system is strong, why it is resilient, why it is stable. So under the unseasonal rains, IMD, it asks the farmers to postpone the harvesting. So in case of the matured crops, IMD, it has advised farmers to harvest the crops like mustard and chickpea in some states at the earliest and store them at safe places. And farmers, they've also been asked to withhold the irrigation to wheat crop 
to avoid lodging. So that is the case. And in the last 24 hours, IMD, it has said that light and moderate rainfall and thunderstorms, they were observed over most part of the country. So even hailstorm was observed in states like Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, West, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Aral, Sima, and Andhra Pradesh. And that's there. So the latest forecast, the IMD said isolated thunderstorm, lightning, squall, and hailstorm that is expected over Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh on 19th of March. So, and so India's daily COVID tally crosses 800 after 126 days. So this is a concern as of now. And Nasik can become defense equipment hub, says Gadkari. So Nasik, which is there in Maharashtra, it has become a defense equipment manufacturing hub as it has companies like Hindustan Aeronautics Limited or as we call it as HAL. So, so in his inaugural address of Know Your Army, a two-day arms and equipment ex exhibition of the Indian Army, he cited the example of the multimodal international passenger and cargo hub airport, which is there in Nagpur, so Mihan, and said that Nasik has a similar potential. So the Rafale aircraft, they are be being manufactured at Mihan in Nagpur, and as many as 450 engineers from engineering colleges in the area, they have got the jobs there. So new age firms, they are unwilling to comply with the rules at times, says RBI governor. So while there is wide appreciation of the online dispute resolution system conceived by RBI, how many PSOs they have actually enabled it? So should not the entities embrace such initiatives up front and enhance the customer satisfaction? So we have talked about this thing already. So ICR and Council of Agricultural Research and World, World Bank they're going to hold the global meet on higher education in agricultural sector. So uh, in PM Gati Shakti, so 156 critical infrastructural gap projects have been identified and a series of regional workshops are also being organized regarding the same. So this PM Gati Shakti program was launched by the government in 2021 October. And so far, 44 network planning group meetings they have been held. And apart from that, the network planning group is constituted on this initiative. So 156 critical infrastructural gaps to ports and for movement of the bulk commodities, such as coal, cement, fertilizers, and food grains, they have been identified for the intervention. So this article is a repeat. It was done earlier. And we have already covered this article also. This is exactly the same as discussed before in today's video that how to diminish parliamentary democracy. We talked about five points regarding this. So we are seeing that China imports rise amid the signs of economic recovery. So China saw its biggest gain in imports in a year last month while a slide in exports deaccelerated, adding to evidence that the world's second largest economy is recovering from the impact of pandemic lockdowns. So since the economy was reopened, so it is recovering back to normalcy. So that's all for today since it is Sunday, so we didn't have much to discuss. And you'll be also getting the PDF link in the description box. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for joining us.